Hello and welcome to the Synthetic Podcast. I'm your host, Synthetic. What's going on, sissies? It has been uh it's it's been a while since I made it, since I made my last episode. I think it's been about a month, something like that. I honestly have been so strapped for free time. It's just that's just been the state of my life. It's not a complaint, uh, for sure. And it's actually Everything that I'm going to talk about today is just basically updates rather than a specific topic. But ev- everything's everything's like all good news all the way through from top to bottom, left to right, inside and out, forward, backward, this dimension, that dimension. Everything's been running on all cylinders, and um, it's just been it's just been really good. So don't think that I've forgotten about the podcast for forgotten about. Um, sharing anything naughty in my personal life it's 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 all been happening um some stuff more than others because you know like i said i've been working a lot and whatnot but uh yeah i'm i'm still here still doing stuff still have people that want to be on the podcast still have people that i plan on hanging out with from my uh naughtier side of life and uh other podcasts are still getting work done that i'm because they're uh, more dense uh, subject matter and whatnot. I'm just going to put, just keep putting those off, just because I want them to be correct and appropriate, or even just properly entertaining. So, every, yeah, everything's still been going on. But um, I am going to start off the top with an email. Then I'm going to get into uh, the updates of my life and whatnot. We also got some questions here, so uh, strap in, folks. And I, I'm not sure how long this episode is going to be. The shorter ones seem to do a little bit better. Uh, I'll I'll try to figure that out a little bit better as time as time you know goes on. Anyways, let's uh, we got one from Marie here, and uh, it's just a single page email this time. So let's let's see what we got going on here. I went to a Halloween party this year with my girlfriend. I was dressed in a gold shimmering uh, mid length mid length mid length dress with a slide slit to my knee. I had my departed mother's mink sole glittering gold shoes, and a matching purse. I had a professional help me with my makeup and had my wig washed and cleaned. I had a snug body briefer with Hanes reinforced heel and toe stockings on after I had my girlfriend's place. Uh, she put me in a sissy cage. I started to leak, and she slapped my, slissy, my sissy clit to subdue me. We went to a steak restaurant, and I was thrilled when our waiter referred to us as ladies, and quote. There was a lady sitting... Uh, at the next table giving me the stink eye. I love the lipstick prints I was leaving on the glass uh, the glass rim. We ordered a ride downtown to a party and entered the security screening. The male security officer wanted me and looked in my purse, and that was the first time I had someone need to see, my, uh, need to see in my purse and my mail ID that I was dressed. We, <laughs> that's... Oh, I can't even imagine how you felt uh, going through that. We entered and grabbed a couple drinks and found a table and a couple of chairs to relax. We never got onto the dance floor since there was no safe place for our purses. We took a few pictures and I soon needed to pee. My girlfriend grabbed my hand and brought us to another floor that was more secluded. She marched us into an open stall, stall door and pushed me in. She watched. I'm sorry. Hang on. I lost my place here. She watched and I raised my dress and squatted down. She bent over and kissed me. When I finished and flushed, she squatted herself and reached under my dress and teased me in my cage. When she finished, she stood up and reached into her purse and placed the collar on my neck and hooked a long leash to it. I was thrilled. After we washed up, we went outside with her tugging on my leash and and guided me. She got us a ride home and I was scared my... And I was scared my neighbors might see me. I bet. <laughs> she led me to the bedroom and began to undress. She pulled on the leash to guide me to her nipples. After a bit, she laid on the bed and tugged on my leash and said, Eat me, Sissy Marie. Her hand shoved my head be- between her legs and I licked her until she orgasmed. She forced me to kneel on all fours. She then put a strap on and lubed it and it lubed it and my fucked my boy pussy. Lost my place again. She slowly forced the toy inside me. Take it all. Take it, you slut. She whispered hoarsely. 
the in and out motion captivated me and I began to rock my hips as she as the pleasure began to build. You like me fucking you, don't you? You don't you, you sissy. Yes, mistress, I cried out. She stopped for a moment and withdrew. She found some other stockings and put one in my mouth as a gag. She reached under me and grabbed my cage and tugged. That useless that's useless to me, isn't it? I nodded my head since I couldn't speak. She took a riding crop and spanked my ass. She started tapping me ryth ta tapping ry rhythmic rhythmically on my cage with a crop. It wasn't long before I came. That's a good sissy girl. She cooed while stroking my wig. I think you should write stories. With uh, We both fell asleep that way and woke up the next morning. I was tired but satisfied, Marie. That is fucking... That is romantic, sweet, hot, sexy, and I love every single part of that day. That's fucking awesome, man. Uh, you seem to do pretty good with finding people that really enjoy that side of you, don't you? I will say, out of all that, though, it's the fact that you felt safe enough to go out in public, and then even though you had a little bit of bullshit to deal with, you just continued throughout your night, your romantic night with your lady. And, uh, yeah, you just didn't let that ruin your excitement and your good time. And then you just had a fucking, a sexy night. That's, that makes me happy. It, uh, I think we should all think about this. Just the fact that you got dressed, left the house, went out. Felt relaxed enough to eat, and regardless of the fucking looks you had to take from people, even if it was just this one person, um, it yeah, you just kept going on. Had to deal with the security guard. Didn't seem like much happened with that, but I'm sure that was kind of thrilling in some sense. Since, uh, there, I mean, yeah, I guess depending on like how each individual person looks and your makeup and all that other stuff, it it might be more hard to tell than others. But, um, yeah, this is fucking hot, man. Thank you for sharing, as always. I it, I got to start living my life uh, a little bit more intensely. I, you, I feel like you, you have me beat to a point to where it's really going to take me a long time to to get into that groove, you know? Um, I will say, I, I was talking with two people, and I still kind of am here and there because they both work... Uh, they both work days. Uh, it's two cross-dressers. They're both from FetLife. They both live in my area, but they both work from home, and they both work days. And with their schedules, it seems like it's been kind of a pain in the ass. And uh, it's <laughs> it's kind of a bummer, man, because um, one of them, our, our schedules are just not cooperating with each other. They work just as much as I do and then the other person we were about to hang out and then something happened with COVID or something like that where somebody in their life got sick and and so on and so forth so I I try to reach out to them every about every week and a half two weeks something like that just to be like hey I didn't forget about you I'm, I'm still working a lot the one that I was talking with uh, I think first she was saying that she lives near hang on here I got it's my eyeball it's driving me fucking nuts Okay, sorry. She was saying that she lives next to or near a cemetery, and she thought it would be hot to do a photo shoot. This was weeks and weeks ago, but the weather was still manageable. And I was like, dude, that sounds fucking awesome. And, you know, with some of my uh, my little content, you know, my, my OnlyFans clips and stuff, that was one of the themes that I wanted to do is make it seem like I was in a cemetery or even maybe go out in actual public and and shoot some uh, some sexy hot content, but I just haven't had the time. And I mentioned to this person as well, like I, I love the idea, but you know my bills and stuff come first. And you know, with just making that a fact of my life, it it makes everything very streamlined for me in terms of my thoughts. So with even with even the sexy fun, uh, I'm like I'm working seven days a week, and then after that I. I try to make OnlyFans content, and then after that, I worry about the podcast. And then after that, I go to the gym if I have time. And then after that, I hang out with friends and, and have uh, fun, sexy time. And 
placing them all in that order, you know, uh, it, it keeps everything most relevant in my life where I want it, and I don't have to uh, really, uh, like, ruminate or brainstorm on how I'm going to make things work. I just, like, if I have time after this, you know, after this time or during this day, these are the hours that I'm free, and, you know, if somebody gets upset, I'm really not worried about it. That's just, uh, that's just where I'm at with everything. I, I'm not... I'm not saying that, uh, like, I should be a, a prize to be won or, or somebody should, you know, feel so grateful that I'm in their presence. I don't, I'm not saying it like that. I'm just saying that, uh, you know, I, I'm trying to hang out with people when I do have the free time. And most of the time, it's not until roughly 2 a.m. And those are the hours when I get home and I'm done with everything that I have time to shoot my OnlyFans content. And e- like even you know plug away on the, uh, on the notes for the podcast, and uh, the with the two people that I was talking about the two cross dressers from Fat Life they've been very understanding so so that's been pretty nice with everything. I on the past what I think two episodes I was talking about I know I, I know for the last one I was talking about how my friend Jen wanted to get emails from me so she could get good deals on laser hair removal. She was talking about getting it on her legs, buttocks, and Perrier. And I was like, yeah, I'll send you good emails. Because the emails I get are like 80% off for you know X amount of whatever, which is like a really big savings. And because it costs thousands of dollars, they're still getting a reasonable amount of money. And it's, it's still a good savings for the person, whoever's getting it. Uh, and if you ever get any business through them, or you know online or whatever they their uh, holiday sales and all that other shit. It's 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 pretty nice. But I I warned her because she was kind of confident like about the first week and a half. Like uh, no, it was like the first week while she was waiting to get her procedure done. And I was like, you know, you should probably order some numbing cream. I sent her a picture of the one I got from Amazon, and she's like, nah, you know, I'll get it the first time without. And then it was like a few hours before she was like, yeah, I'm kind of nervous. And I was like, yeah, it fucking hurts. But uh, if you're not getting your upper lip done, which she wasn't, uh, like I said, legs, buttocks, and Perrier, uh, I was like, everything else ain't shit in the comparison. And then, uh, you know, she hit me up afterwards and she said, actually, the Perrier, and that's around your asshole. She was like, that hurt the most. And I I was kind of surprised because even without cream, it wasn't nearly as bad as maybe the buttocks are and the buttocks aren't anything compared to your shins and the kneecap that sucks so much but even that is way less than getting your laser hair treatment around your fucking upper lip it's just how it is people i'm gonna say it and say it again so if any of you were ever considering getting any laser hair uh removal treatments the upper lip is by far the worst that I've had. And I've had my entire face, which includes the neck area, my back, which includes the very upper shoulders, and then around um, beneath the armpits, going down through your sides, got the buttocks, the Perrier. Again, the Perrier is code for ass crack in your butthole. And my entire uh, lower leg, upper leg, leg, all the way around, and then the feet. The feet, mostly on the, uh, on the very top of the foot. That's that, that's what sucks. You would think the toes hurt. The toes are a quick like little snap. They're not shit. Interestingly, moving on from that, somebody that I talked to months and months ago, I'm pretty sure I talked about this, but um, she works at a facility I deliver meds to. It's midway through my route in East Lansing somewhere. And she was talking about how she was going to be out for a few months for shoulder surgery. And I was like, oh, and another month or so. Or I was like, no, in another like two or three months because this was a while ago. I was like, I'm going to be out for, uh, what was it, two weeks. And she was like, oh, what are you getting done? And I, I was like, oh, I'm getting a Brazilian butt lift. And she kind of gave me this look. She's like, really? And I showed her my Instagram. And she was like, oh, oh she, okay. But she wasn't taken back by it. Um, to give you more details, she is a slightly older black woman. Slightly, I, I don't want to say overweight necessarily, but a little, she got a little meat on her bones. I, the reason that I say that is because um, 
about a week and a half ago, she was talking about other treatments that she wanted done. She had mentioned that she had already got some stuff done to her face in regards to moles and stuff like that, like getting them burnt or frozen off. I can't remember which. And then I opened up about my facial hair uh, treatments, and she was like, "Oh, really?" She was like, "That's what I want done next." And then, then because I, you know, I already told her about the Brazilian butt lift, and I showed her my Instagram. Everything else comes easy after that. So I'm like, well, yeah, because I've already walked down this path. I would totally love to explore or explain what somebody could be looking at. And the reason that I mentioned that she's black is because when you, if you're, if you're a white person that has darker hair, you are the ideal candidate for the potential of what the lasers can do. If you're, if you are somebody that has darker skin, it's going to be a more rough ride because they have to use different lasers and it's not nearly effective. The reason being the lasers are able to concentrate the heat on the pigment of the hair. So being white skin and black hair, it's not going to target the skin nearly as much as it will the dark hair. But if you have dark hair and dark skin, <coughs> It's, it's going to be a much longer and much more painful journey. Now, from what I understand, they do have lasers for people with uh, darker skin, but it's just more of a struggle. So if you're somebody that has darker skin or you're, or you're black, like I mentioned, please keep that in mind. And then obviously have a conversation with people that are going to be doing your procedure because you are going to have a different experience than somebody with lighter skin and um, also people with lighter hair, it doesn't work nearly as well too because there's no pigment uh, present for the laser to do its job. So you, in those particular zaps, you might even feel a lack of pain just because there's it's it's not you know frying anything. So um, hang on here, let me let me go down my list but um oh the other thing that she had mentioned besides that stuff is that she wanted i think she wanted some plastic surgery done in her in her midsection i can't remember but it was a it was a nice pleasant thing and it it all started because i felt comfortable enough to kind of come out about the whole hey this is what i do on the weekends kind of thing and you know i it's just it, all right so because the cross-dressing trans thing or whatever, from a vanilla person or not, it's at this point in history, especially as far as vanilla people are concerned, it's very non-typical in terms of like sexuality or fetishes and whatever else. That's probably the, the best, most rounded way to talk about it with where we stand in history now. Um... And you know, a lot of people just don't want to be involved, on uh, you know, in the in the greater public with somebody's uh, sexual fetish and whatever else. And you know, when you listen to people, you know, talk about that, especially people that are more conservative or more right leaning with their politics, that's just the way that they think about sexuality. So, you know, when some of us are kind of like just wandering out in public, like Marie here. Some of these people just get offended and they can't take it. And especially if they have their kids with them, they feel like, why should their kids have to see this and, and all that other stuff. But I, I say that to, you know, say that the opposite side of that are the people that don't think like that. You can kind of share a life experience of like, oh, I struggled through all this fucking thousands of dollars that I spent and this, this pain that I had to deal with and all this recovery time. And I had to figure out what I had to do with work. So, like I said time and time again, through some of my personal experiences that, that somebody asked me a question of like, oh, what's your end goal or what's your plan or why are you doing this? Whether it's with the Brazilian butt lift or the laser hair removal, some people are actually interested. Or some people want to have like a human experience just talking with their, uh, their customer, their patient, or maybe you're just somebody out in public that's just like, Maybe you are cross-dressing and then you choose to go to a gas station to get a fucking energy drink or something. I don't know. And somebody on the other side of the register or maybe even the line strikes up a conversation with you. So 
you know, I, I'm always open to these positive experiences, you know, and the only downside of that is if that requires you to be in pub public and be exposed to people that really don't agree with your lifestyle, then that's, it is what it is. As long as you're not, as long as you're being safe and somebody doesn't really have harm towards you, that that's obviously what we're going to be striving for. But um, just like with me and Marie here, there's plenty, plenty of positive experiences and plenty of positive people out there in the world, and you just gotta, you just gotta plug in and engage, you know. So, you know, think about that if, uh, if you have that fear, you know, riding in your world or whatever. Oh, I, um, I, I wanted to mention this because I, the one of the people was um, one of the cross dressers I was talking about was asking me about, um, oh, do you want to go to this? I forget what the club is called. You'd think I would fucking know by now, but it's a it's a club basically for trans women and cross-dressers. I believe it's in Ferndale. Hang on, you know, I have a computer right here. Let me just pull it up. Ends up uh, being a, a mumbling asshole. Um, I don't know why my fucking internet has uh, not been so fast. Let's see. Uh, cross... Dresser bar. Um, Soho, Ferndale, Elks. What? Let's see here. Come on, man. Everybody has to be an ad and a fucking... Alright, so Adam's Apple, and then... GG's, that's what it's called. Um, yes, so... It actually has pretty good reviews, too. Four stars. Huh. Oh, there's another one. But, uh, yeah, she she was saying, hey, do you want to go to Gigi, Gigi's dressed up and just get some drinks? And I was like, fuck. And, you know, because I have my head in my ass so much with my personal life, I just don't think about it. And I was like, dude, that does sound nice. So I'm actually seriously considering when I do have free time to go out dressed up. And I'm going to put together a, a public appropriate uh, type of outfit you know, or attire. So I'll, I'll keep you posted on that when that happens. I'm actually excited and like nervous about it. So yeah, I, I just wanted to mention that because I didn't, uh, didn't type it up in my show notes here. So you know how I get, I start to repeat myself. I start to mumble and go on side tangents of side tangents and, and so on and so forth. That's why I have the notes folks. The next thing that I wanted to talk about, and I thought this was pretty interesting. Um, I, I might have mentioned this in the last podcast, but if I didn't, uh, I'm going to give you the down low. And if I did, well, this is going to be an update about that. But about a month or so ago, I had uh, texted my boss, the owner of the pharmacy that I deliver meds for. I was like, hey, um, I wanted to see you know, how you felt about you know, me getting a raise slash bonus. And I was like, I've been with the company for almost 10 years. And he's like, yeah, well, let's talk about it in person. I'll, you know, um, I'll, I'll talk about it uh, next time I'm at the pharmacy. Well, the thing is, he hasn't been at the pharmacy. And I don't start working until much later. So I sent, I sent him a text, what, three days ago? Something like that. <coughs> and he was like, yeah, for sure. Um, call me anytime after two. And the next day I called him. No call. I think it was call him after one, and I called him around two forty-five after I got home from the gym. And uh, I asked him. I was like, "Hey, you know, how do you feel like about a two-dollar raise?" And you know, he was kind of like busting my balls. And I was like, hey, "You know, how do you think it sounds?" And he's like, "I think it sounds horrible." And um, and he was like, "Listen, he's like, you know, everybody, all the drivers are making fifteen dollars an hour." And he's like, "If I gave you even just a dollar raise at sixteen dollars an hour." I would have to pay everybody else an extra dollar an hour. And he's like, you know, the drivers are, are my bi biggest expense because I can't control the overtime, which is true. He can't. And in terms of how much money he, he spends, just, just with the act of how our department functions as being a delivery driver, it, um, it's substantial. I've been making overtime for about four months now. Or no, less than that. But uh, either either way, my overtime has been between 20 and 30 hours, every single paycheck. And because I'm a reasonable fucking human being, 
I understood what he was talking about, and I agreed with him. However, uh, last, I want to say it was last summer that, well, we had <clears throat> two workers. They were both brothers. One was Tim. I forget the other guy's name. Ben? Yeah, his name was Ben because if you called him Benjamin, he just lost his fucking mind for whatever reason. I don't know. Uh, they were both really cool. But Ben, once he started working there, he got all the other drive not me, but he got all the other drivers, like, riled up real bad. And he's like, we should be making more money. We should have, like, some sort of, like, a fucking union. And then all the other drivers like, yeah, we need a raise and fucking blah, 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 blah. And uh, <laughs> I just wasn't, like, bothered by it. But I have the best route in the pharmacy. I have the best hours. I'm not scheduled to work weekends, even though I have been. It's because... If I wasn't, somebody else would be getting the overtime, and I still get my route on the weekends, where it's when you work weekends, you mostly don't have your normal route. You you mostly have your route plus some, and you, you just don't have as many drivers. So the weekends are fucking horrible, because you could be working two hours, or you could be working 12. Um, and that And that's just what it is. But, you know, we're in a group chat, and Mike responded to all the drivers in the group chat like he's like i don't know why everybody's upset i try to do my best to stay out of your way <coughs> and um but if you want to raise i'll give you two options you could take a dollar raise or a 500 hundred dollar bonus and he's like <coughs> sorry about this nose i don't know where this is coming from the last three days my nose has just been leaking out of nowhere anyways and he's uh he's like let me know by tomorrow and again this is like last year last summer uh, with your choice or whatever and just text me personally so every uh, everybody took the 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 dollar race cuz it's just more money over time you don't need that much time to equal up your $500 if you're if you're working overtime you know what i mean to get, to really get your money's worth and I sent him a text. I was like, hey, I'm not with everybody else. I'm not, I'm not unhappy. I don't want the bonus. I don't want the dollar an hour raise. I was like, if you can, please split please split up whatever you would give to me to Hoos and Humza because they work more than everybody else. And they really deserve it because they're really stressed out. And he just gave me a prayer hands emoji. And that was the end of it. But even though I said that $500 did appear on my next paycheck. So I did appreciate it. Clearly it saves him more money. If I just get the $500 bonus. As opposed to the dollar bonus. But it is what it is. Um, I told him I didn't want it. And I got it. And I don't know if he, if he gave a anything else to Hoos and Humza. I have no idea. But. The fact of the matter is that. Like my boss said when we were talking on the phone. All the other drivers don't make 15 most of them make 16 now. The fact is, I am the driver with the most seniority now at $15 an hour. The reason I'm not upset about that is because I know some things now. I know that I'm just another cog in the machine, and that's fine. That's That doesn't make me upset. <clears throat> the reason that I wanted to for him to say that is is kind of a selfish reason, believe it or not. And you're probably saying, well, you know, that really doesn't make any sense. How, like, how is that? With my job, and you know, with my personality and, and my past working history, almost every single job I've had, with the exception of, like, maybe three, there's a sense of complacency that I have eventually found myself in with almost every job. Some of them more serious. Some of them just more novel jobs. Like I worked at a toy store. I worked at a candy factory. And I've, I've done a few uh, odds and ends types of jobs that were just really comfy. They didn't pay a lot. But the the work stress and the responsibility, responsibility was so low that you really kind of had to go out of your way to have a bad day. And with this job... 
because I've been there for over 10 years now, the sense of complacency and, you know, knowing, knowing what it's like to, to just do the same thing over and over again, know what's expected of you. And, um, you know, just, uh, <clears throat> what's the word I'm looking for? To not have your workload be extended past what it what it has been for quite some time, there's a sense of relief to it. There's a sense of laziness or complacency that you find yourself in if you're if you don't self examine. Now I've known this about two years in, three years in, something like that, because the job really never changed all that much. But for me, because I, I didn't argue with them. I was like, oh, okay, because the agreement we, we came to was like, how about for a Christmas bonus I give you $1,000? And I was like, sweet, I really appreciate that. Thank you. And he's like, all right, we have a deal. So around the pay period that would be closest to Christmas, I'm he's like, just remind me, and I will. It's not it's not a big deal. But 1000 bucks is 1000 bucks, and I know... Whether it's a dollar raise or a two dollar raise, either way, it's a it's a lot of money for him. And plus, I know that recently, I heard from one of the other drivers that he was actually in the news for buying some big building that he's going to turn into apartments. So I, I imagine his money is spread thin, and he's just trying to save money in every front. And it's fine. I, again, I'm I'm sincerely not mad or upset, but I wanted to use this also selfishly as a way for myself to be like, hey. You're topped out at this job. Your rent is kind of going up every year, but don't make this the rest of your fucking life. And I st- and I talked about this several times in the podcast. I don't want to do this for the rest of my life. I love the job. I like it. The money's really good for the amount of work that I do, which is next to none. It really is. The fact that I get paid $15 an hour to do what I do now is I I almost feel guilty every time I get paid. But, you know, because Money, like this job requires me to be present and me to not be home and do, you know, everything else. It is what it is. So it's fair. uh, But I I wanted to use this as a way to be like, all right, you're topped out. You've reached a dead end financially. So what are we going to do? Let's start working on the thing that I wanted to do. And, you know, obviously that is my getting the rest of my surgeries done. So, uh, I did talk about getting a hair transplant. I did talk about, uh, facial feminization, feminization surgery, tit implants. Um, and then, uh, I maybe a little dental work (coughs) and then getting on hormones. And then the other thing that I, I need to be considered with, because I don't have a personal car right now, everything that I have in terms of my vehicle is for work. Even though it's in my name, it still has a tracker in it. And just like with the last vehicle, because I'm using it for work, they take care of all the repairs. And then when it bottoms out and it falls apart and I give it to them and then they give me a new one and so on and so forth. But I'm going to start really taking the time and effort and money. So looking for a new job that's going to be safer for me and somewhere where I can continue to develop physically and continue with that side of my life so I can take the podcast more seriously, have more serious guests, more serious topics for people in our community. And, you know, honestly, and I, I and this sounds selfish, it really does, but I'm, I'm just being honest with you, as I do want to work on my, you know, adult content, my OnlyFans stuff, like my porn, as, as silly as that sounds, I want to have a more serious footprint with that. I, I want to be out there a little bit more. I want, I don't want to fucking play dress up like I have been, where I have to be completely reliant on wearing a wig and heels and makeup to to look feminine and sexy. I want all these surgeries done. That means I'm going to have to work a little bit more for them, have some money tucked away, and ha- have my life a little bit more buttoned up. It's unfortunate at the age of 38 that I decided that this is what I want to do, and the reason I say unfortunate is because I waited this long in my life to just be lazy and complacent because things have been nice and soft and I know everything that's expected of me. Um, But 
I'm starting now, and I'm not starting at 45 or 50 or 55 or 60. And I know what I want to do. I know how I want to spend the rest of my uh, life, or at least the pursuits that I that I want to to shoot in. That the you know the paths that I want to take, and that involves me to live the life of a woman, or at least looking feminine or f- like feminine and androgyny. You know, androgynous. I'm sorry. Because I, I really do think that androgynous look, even for actual natural born women, I, I love the short hair and, you know, the facial features and, you know, uh, Danny Daniels, as I think is going to be the best example of that overall. Again, she's a she's a porn star, especially if you look at her earlier stuff. But even now, she still has um, hints of that uh, androgynous look. But that's that's how I'm taking that not getting a raise. I'm, I'm Again, I'm still getting a thousand dollar bonus. But I'm I'm making this a sign to myself now. All right, you've kind of outlived your your little you know, it's not a contract, but you know your your little contract with this this job that you've been doing for the past ten years. Let's put things in the high gear now. Quit being a lazy fuck, Brandon. Let's if you want these surgeries done or if you want to start th- taking things more serious, then start spending the money or start tucking things away because like I said I'm worried about losing the job in terms of like coming out and hormones and all this other stuff with all this stuff I'm not going to get these next procedures with the exception of maybe a hair transplant I'm not be going not be going not going to be getting the facial feminization surgery tits or hormones while I'm working here I'm going to do those after the fact but I can continue to save up money get a car and look for work elsewhere to where it might be safer for me. And you know, because rent is still nice, my rent went up to six seventy five from six fifty, so it's only you know twenty five dollars uh, a month extra. It's it's not that much. I'm not I'm not going to be homeless. Things are things are really good. But now I just took that as a, as a sign to just be a little bit more proactive with my life. So. That's how I took that not getting uh, any kind of raise but a $1,000 bonus, and uh, it is what it is. So let's move on to the next subject. So I don't know how many of you have been paying attention to the lotto at all, but it peaked at about $1.9 billion. $1.9 billion on the line. And uh, I didn't win much. It was like... 10 bucks or something out of all the different tickets that I played because there's like a few different games that I kind of give my attention to the the biggest one that I played was lotto 47 Michigan lotto and that was like twenty five hundred dollars something like that but this time I was like fuck everybody's playing it and I will say when things get into the billions the type of conversations you have with people out in public or even at work it was so much fun to kind of listen to everybody's list of like You know, who's on it? Who are you going to give money to? And then depending on how long the conversation was, it was like, how much money is is each person getting? What are you going to do with it? Are you going to quit quit your job? Are you going to try to do whatever you want it to do? Like, what are all your fantasies? And there's a certain level of not, not just excitement, but hope. It seems that people display when you're when you start talking about something that is that crazy and i i absolutely love it when everybody gets happy like that uh, but apparently the 1.9 billion went to somebody in california and then i i seen some something else in my google alerts with uh a michigan resident winning like a million a, a million dollars of that it was like it was over 1.9 billion exactly but um nonetheless you know somebody uh, won the 1.9 billion and I forget what the take home is but it's it's substantial nonetheless it's still quite a bit of money uh yeah so I'm not gonna stop playing that's for sure and I I've been playing noticeably more ever since I won that 2500 but um yeah you just gotta you gotta play to win folks you gotta play to win so if you have any fantasies about winning the jackpot of whatever spend the money if you can afford it and that's what everybody says about uh, lotto or stocks or bonds or crypto. Don't play with any money. Don't spend any money that you can't afford to lose. If you can, or if it's like kind of like some game to you, or, and if you would have spent that money on video games or a trip or some sort of entertainment, then, then do it. 
because it's as long as you're not playing like in stocks. I I forget what it's called, but there's um. Uh, it's it doesn't have something to do with shares. It, it has something to do with something else. But as long as you're not doing that, basically, you're not really at risk. Ah, shit, I forget what the phrase is or whatever, but there's a certain thing that you can sign up for when you're buying stocks and whatnot that uh, that puts you at high risk if you don't know what you're doing. To it, it, it like lends you more money in the market, but then when you're uh, when you're doing stuff, the the risk changes. I I, I don't remember because I I just chose to not take part into that. But if you're on like the Robinhood app or something. If you get like the gold membership, it allows you to, it automatically like signs you in to that kind of finance type of stuff. And I just, I don't know anything about it. It still doesn't make any sense to me. So I, so I stay away. But anyways, that's, that's what happened with that. More good news. My mom has been feeling better. She had two or three different things wrong with her. I talked about on the last, I think two or three different episodes that um, she wasn't doing good. And I was going over there much more often to help out with basic things like take the trash to the trash can right outside of the house and take the you know the trash when it's ready from the garage to the to the road and pick up the mail and help with this and that and um, she's been doing really good. She's got everything figured out. She has some issues with her retaining water and her liver and some some joint pain in her hands. And then I apparently with that the last because she had like in the past month I think like six or seven different doctor visits something like that none that involved the emergency room but she really wasn't doing good and I had suggested to her to buy a bunch of different um, gummy vitamins and then I actually took it upon myself to buy her like ten or eleven different ones the reason being. Is that because gummies are the way that they are? They're uh, they're easily digestible, so just you gnawing on them just a little bit before you send them down your throat, they start to just dissolve and break down right away. So as soon as they hit the, your stomach, the enzymes can kind of do their job and just start absorbing the nutrients as it's going through your system. And she had talked to her with her doctor about it, and he's like, "Yeah, that's a really good idea." Well, there were two separate conversations. I didn't know that they had already talked about the the vitamin gummies, but I was like, I know you're not eating good because everybody in my family has noticeably not been doing good. And I, I'm not saying this to poke fun or be mean because I, th I think a lot of people listening can kind of attest to this, but I remember in my trailer park days, you know, because my dad was always a health nut and, like, you know, eating, you know, fucking steamed vegetables and either like uh, uh, chicken or uh, some type of uh, other meat or whatever, like a uh, liver or some sort of chop. And when he wasn't eating in between meals, he would have like a slim fast. And then he was always encouraging me to drink a slim fast. And then my mom was drinking them. But me and my mom, we wouldn't change like our eating habits. And, you know, I was growing and I was I was always really active, but... With like my mom and you know other people in my family, with things like Slim Fast and a Diet Coke, they were like, "Oh well, I can have more Slim Fast and I can have more Diet Cokes, and I can have almost it's almost like they didn't change their even eating habits at all because like Slim Fast is like a meal replacement. Like if you ever looked at the ingredients of like a Slim Fast, there's a lot of shit in there, which is why is it's why they have to have like a really thick chocolate taste, and they're very the the viscosity is thick as well. They're very like a weighty, thick molassesy type of uh, drink. But the thing that you notice about people like Diet Coke people is like when they go to like uh, like a fast food place, and I I noticed this even when I worked at like the two different Burger Kings for a total of, of like five months, like I did, is um they just. You know, they'll like have a, a large fry and a, a large burger or onion rings. And it's like, oh, it's all right because I'm having a Diet Coke. Like that's where the sugar is. And it's just like, fuck, man. But, you know, with most people in my family, whether it's my mom um, or like even my sister before she passed away or like everybody on my cousin's side, 
Diet Cokes, the caffeine free diet uh, Diet Coke with like the the one in like the gold looking can with like the black or red lettering. No working out, and it's like yeah, your 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 body's gonna turn to shit real fast. Because I wouldn't say I'm the epitome of of health or anything, but if you look at me and the rest of my family, it's it's wildly different. Even even not even just on my mom's side, but at my dad's side, it's like I'm the most fit person, and I'm like fuck, man. Like that's not saying too much about everybody else, but you know it is what it is. But I'm happy she's doing better. I bought her a fuck ton. It's all in all, it was like a hundred fifty dollars worth of gummy vitamins in total. When you look at everything, and uh, the reason that I chose not, <clears throat> I'm sorry, that I chose not to just get the just a single multivitamin is just for the simple fact that. You know, when you get when you look at most multivitamins, it's not a hundred percent of your daily values for every single thing. I, and I'm assuming they do that obviously to make it more supplementary, but that you're also going to be eating reasonable food for your diet. But I know she isn't. I know she doesn't eat a lot, and when she does, it's bullshit. So what I ended up buying her is uh, eight greens apple gummies, which has a bunch of different. Um, Green foods just like chopped down and like condensed into like these really sour gummies. Omega-3 gummies. I also bought her uh, collagen gummies. Zinc joint support that has... um, Hang on, what is it in here? My fucking internet is so slow, it's pissing me off. Glucosamine. I bought her... uh, What is it? Another joint thing. With cartilage with uh, vitamin E. Airborne, so vitamin C, and it's like high in a bunch of other stuff. Zinc. Uh, let's see what else do we got here. And then a uh, vegetarian. I don't know why these people are all about vegetarian or whatever, but uh, bi- biotin. And lutein. And uh, like just the list is is really large. And. You know, if you if you take all these and still kind of eat like shit, you should be better off than what you were. And I just I'm trying to do whatever so my mom doesn't die because if she's not going to like lift weights while she's wa- watching the housewives of whatever the fuck, then I'm doing everything I can do if she doesn't want to improve past that. But I spent the money. I asked her last night. I sent her a little text, and she said yeah. And you know, I was like I love you, and she gave me like a little that little smiley face with the hearts around it emoji and uh i don't know i'm gonna try to stay on top of her and help out as much as i can but uh i don't want her to die she's my mom next up podcast we've surpassed 10,000 downloads with the way that they have their tracker set up the tracker is automatically set up with their achievements so once you reach the 10,000 it doesn't visibly show me the consumer what I have past 10,000 downloads, except the fact that I have reached, I have in fact reached the 10,000 uh, download milestone. I reached out to them, and they said that they were going to, the person that reached out to me said that they were going to reach out to the team and see if they can increase that. I just don't know why they wouldn't have an open tracker just so I could keep track of that shit. Because people, apparently people that have, um, like sell stuff like advertisers they don't give a shit about the number of subscribers that's just the number it seems like a lot of people that have podcasts or start podcasts think is is really good but they want to know how many downloads you get like every month and while i can see like my past month i can't see my total uh downloads past ten thousand, which kind of sucks because let's say a few years from now i'm like oh it just shows me ten thousand, and then i have to go through and individually count all the downloads for every episode I mean, I suppose I could keep track of it past that, like on a piece of paper, but it's kind of like, well, what the fuck, man? I'm paying you all this money, and you can't at least just have an open tracker of, like, oh, you know, we're at uh, 15,000 downloads as of last month or whatever. It's I don't know. So we'll see. Hopefully they kind of have some um, common sense with that. Like I said, because I've been busy, because I've been working seven days a week, and... It's a few hours before work and a few hours after work to where I try to smash in all my gym time, time to work on the podcast and make content. Uh, 
I, I've been limiting myself even more to how often I've been putting out episodes. I think uh, it's been almost four months since my last episode. But I, I plan to increase the frequency slightly and the uh, intensity, like quality of the podcast sometime in April. And I think um, April, at the end of April or the beginning of May is when I should be have everything paid off and I, and I shouldn't be in a total uh, mad spiral with everything. Because I, I made, on my uh, notes app, on my little iPhone here, I thought it would be interesting to see exactly how many days I, I could work. So ever since I started working, when I came back, it was August 16th. And I just, I made the end of like every month kind of like a milestone. So as of September 30th, it's 46 days straight. October 31st, 77 days straight. November 30th would be 107 days straight. Uh, and if I keep obviously on that trajectory of seven days, December 31st would be 138 days. January 31st, 169 days. But, um, to have my friend Mark paid off because I told him I wouldn't stop working until I did April 30th. And because at the beginning of a week, it would actually be uh, – discount would actually be higher than that. But it would be roughly 258 days that I would work straight in a row. And obviously because, like I said, because my job is so easy, I haven't been stressed out at all. Like it's currently as I'm recording this, it's 2.13 p.m. on a Friday. And, uh, I, I still have, you know, probably like another, I don't know, 20 or so minutes on this, uh, probably closer to a half an hour on this episode. I'm going to, you know, clean everything up, load it. And then I'm still going to have another couple hours before I even have to go into work. So I'm going to prep up for my next video, which I'm going to try to do tomorrow night after work. And, uh, yeah, so I'm. I'm sorry, and you know I've had actually people been reaching out to me, which makes me feel nice to know that people have been looking forward towards it. But uh, you know, I I don't want to rush anything with with anything because I've always regretted that at any point in my life, whether I've been a teenager in my twenties, in my early thirties, and even now, whenever it's been like my personal content or even a podcast episode, and I. I didn't have the proper research done or I was stumbling over my words because I didn't have my notes properly aligned. There was always um, some just really non-negotiable uh, lack of quality that I, I just can't I just can't keep up with just because it's not it's not good and I, I, I hate it when I watch or listen to anything um, that clearly some, somebody didn't put a lot of time and effort into. You know, It's one thing if they're putting their heart and soul into it and you can kind of see that they're trying in, in some form or fashion, but overall, like, let's be honest, just because you're stumbling your way through life, I've been Forrest Gumping my way through life, but that, that doesn't mean you're going to have a good uh, quality product at the end of the day. So the rate is going to be what it's going to be at roughly until then, so I do apologize if you're... Um, if you're upset, but, uh, I'm, I'm doing, I'm doing the best I can. And if things aren't the best that they can be, cause there, there have been episodes that I had to re-record or just delete because they weren't good. And there's been plenty of, uh, you know, only fan stuff that I just straight up deleted. And I was like, this isn't, this isn't good enough. We could do, we could do better than that. And you know, it, I like working at that level of uh, quality. I will say though that everybody seems to agree that if you're consistent, that's what everybody appreciates and I totally get it. Because I I you know, I started off roughly one episode every week, which was quite a lot because I would spend every single waking hour waking up, going to the gym, coming home, eating, typing on my podcast for, you know, typing my notes for like two or three days. And then, you know, recording, working on it, doing all my OnlyFans content on the weekend. And then it was just like that all the time to where I didn't have time to hang out with anybody. I had to sacrifice my schedule to just see friends and family. So I, I definitely, I will say, 
I would definitely be open to doing an episode every single week. Assuming that my work situation way down the road changes to where I don't have to work a traditional 8 to 4, 9 to 5 job. Obviously, you know, I work 6 to 2 a.m., but uh, you know what I mean. Anyways, moving on. Since we're talking about content, OnlyFans solidly at 427 subscribers and uh, made a total of gross of uh, over 4,300, net 3,400. Everything has been going really good. I had to slow everything down just like with the podcast, so I'm barely making one video and the minimal number of pictures about every other weekend or so, which fucking sucks. I just like with the podcast, I wish I could be recording every week, but because I've been trying to get in those hours and I do have a work vehicle that does need work from time to time, at least two to two times a week, I find myself either going into work early for the for an oil change or because the brakes need to get done or something else is wrong with the car or um, my company needs totes picked up from somewhere. It fucking sucks. So unless I have my phone on airplane mode until I go into work, there's just been that uh, constant interruption. But uh, the content has been has been super fun, super awesome. One of the interesting things that's actually been making me feel pretty good is uh, <coughs> I've been getting more and more comments and requests to take pictures either without makeup without my breast form or without any of the extra bullshit and actually hearing my voice more. So rather than just, ju just, than just doing those like uh, weird music video things that I like to do. And it's not because I like to hide behind the editing because it's actually more of a pain in the ass. If I have to stitch a song together, because you know, obviously if um, depending on how long the video is and how long the audio track is most, most times it, it turns out that with the audio track, it's not nearly as long as the video. So I have to either figure out a good a good spot to repeat it. So you just hear the same song over and over again until the video is over. over. And in, in very rare cases is the song even close to the length of the video. In which that case, I will alter the actual video content to match the audio content. But um, no, it's been making me feel real sexy. And, you know, real pretty when people are like, I love hearing your voice. I love seeing, like, your flat chest or, like, your little titties or whatever. I like seeing your minimal makeup look. I do like the lashes, but, you know, uh, I've been making a lot of content for this one particular person. He goes by the name of Dwayne. And I recently made a nice, like, 17-minute clip for him of just no makeup, no lashes, no lipstick, no breast form, no heels... Just uh, just my normal blonde wig that I always wear, and uh, uh, this last video was a black jock strap, which uh, he loves, and I loved I loved making it. But the the comments have been slowly sneaking their way in of just that, like just me being bare minimum, and I, honestly, no bullshit, it's been making me feel really nice, and. Um, uh, just that, that, uh, I don't want to say like loved in a vanilla kind of way, but just as like my more normal self, like my more basic out of the box batteries, not included kind of way. Uh, it's been, it's been nice. Uh, I wanted to share, well, this isn't a small story or whatever, but two of the ladies at my last facility, I deliver meds to, they, um, they are. They have been aware of me for quite some time, for several months, in fact. One of them, uh, as of two days ago, she had her last day. But before then, last last week or so, I brought in my high heels, my black pair, so that they could both walk around in the facility and wear them. All the old folks were asleep, and the other workers were on the other side of the uh, on the other side of the facility, just tending to their people. And. Um, you know, it was uh, it was really fun and silly because one of them's really short and tiny and petite. The other one is a little bit taller, a little bit thicker, and more curves. the The tiny one, because she's more of like a tomboy, she has to weigh like eighty five pounds, 
but um, she could barely walk around. But the other one was like strutting like she was all sexy. And I guess she loves shoes and high heels anyways. So that was really fun. But I tried to bring in uh, two pairs of heels for Bobby, the one that was leaving, the, the curvier, thicker one. I tried to bring in bring in taller pair uh, of heels for her. I was going to bring in the, the pink pair of like the 10 inches. And then I brought in a smaller pair, the 8 inch of the white heels that I have for uh, the the tinier one. And so we could all kind of just like, you know, take turns like walking around and just be silly and whatever. I, I thought it was really fun to know that people that even though they're at their at their job and again, everybody was sleeping, but it was um, there was no naughty or sexy feelings involved because they don't uh, they don't see me like that. And I don't think about them like that, but just to. It was kind of like fun in a, like a, a spicy, clean kind of way to, to be naughty at a facility, like right in front of people. And nobody gives a fuck because they're like, yeah, this is, this is, we like you as you, and this is kind of sexy to be. They, they didn't say that. I'm just throwing language out there. It's like, it's just, it's fun and sexy to wear heels at work that are 10 inches long, that doing something you totally shouldn't be doing. Um, I never actually uh, chose to, to wear them. Um, you know, it, because I, I usually spend a little time hanging out at my last facility. I, uh, you know, once once X amount of time goes by, the call lights start to go off and they just start to need to uh, start to attending other people. And when I was thinking about it, they both got called away and I was like, ah, fuck it. You know, that's just it's fine. Whatever. But um, yeah, the uh, the one lady is leaving due to a lack of compensation because they've been hiring new people. And um uh, they are hiring these new people in at the pay that this person was getting for years. And she recently got the charge, um, like the shift manager pay. And it's like 75 cents more than what these chicks were making. And she was like, fuck that. She's like, I asked for a raise. They gave me this bullshit, you know, not, not even a full dollar raise. And I guess she was in the middle of moving anyway. She's like, I put in my two weeks. Nobody said anything. Nobody cares. And the last two days I went in, it was all mayhem because you have a bunch of pe people that are working that don't know how to count meds and or are not allowed to pass meds. And they're doing that without actually either, either being paid to be a med passer or um, even having the title. So it's been totally fucked. And last night it seemed like they, everybody was having a meltdown. So... Um, that's been that's been pretty crazy. Besides all that though, the uh, the content ideas have still been streaming like a son of a bitch and I <laughs> I do my best and this is really hard to not overly think about coming up with new ideas because like, all right, so for me an idea could be as something as simple as a video title. And as soon as I have like a, a title that pops into my mind, I have to write it down because sometimes the title is just too good. Sometimes they're a little bit like a play on words or like they're really silly or they're just really they're um, really nasty or, or they just kind of get the point across and because I just heard a certain song that, that puts me in that kind of like zone or mood or that kind of uh that vibe or that theme i'm like all right this is a th this is going to be a thing later i can't do it now but i'm going to write it down on my loose leaf paper and like i mentioned before i write down the title the theme the music where i'm going to be filming it at the type of clothes that i'm going to wear the props that i'm going to be using makeup accessories uh all that stuff breast form and uh all that streams out of just like one idea. And sometimes it's it's not even that stuff. I'll buy something new. Like um like like recently I and I even though I've been paying all this money to my buddy Mark and uh, cuz you know I owe him money and still been paying on my credit card, I still been buying shit, which is another reason why I'm working more. But uh I bought a a green uh, not green, a camo jock strap, camo high heels, and these these are more like your your basic uh, closer to your basic pumps. I don't even think these things are six inches long. I think they're like five inches. 
and then I bought a green military hat. And you know, when I when I start thinking about like combinations of clothing, I'm like, well, I haven't done green and black. I haven't done you know uh, green and white. And then sometimes when I'm just driving, I'll I'll start thinking about all these color combinations. So, well, did I wear this with that? Have I wore these glasses when I was trying to do this type of look? Oh, I haven't done a cyberpunk look yet. You know, as soon as like I, I buy a new pair of glasses because I was trying to have a match with something else. And I'm just like, fuck, man. And then the, the ideas just keep piling on more and more and more. I have a couple Halloween vids I wanted to do. I feel like it's too late in the year to kind of post those. Like I like I talked before, sploshing is like when, you, when you're doing stuff with food. But I wanted to do one where I was fully dressed up as a witch. Actually, both of these include me being a witch. But one, I was going to be fucking like a jack-o'-lantern, like a pumpkin. And with the way that I was going to have the camera placed you were going to be able to see me kind of penetrating from, like, uh, where I'd be, like, pointing the pumpkin. You'd be able to see down the top of the pumpkin. But I'd be, like, sitting on the couch, so you, the camera would be kind of uh, out in front, and the, the, the top of the pumpkin would be tilted towards the camera so you could see me penetrating. And then, obviously, you could see, like, the cum shot as I was fucking the pumpkin. And I just thought that'd be really hot to, like, you know, have, like, the witch's hat. I bought an orange corset and black and orange striped stockings. And I bought orange laces that I could put in my uh, orange or my black heels. But then, it, because I haven't had time to do that shit, or, you know, carve a pumpkin and then kind of get everything ready for that and fuck it, I was like, alright, I'll do that one next Halloween, but, you know, maybe this Halloween I can just use the hat and my see-through black corset and not use the breast form, go easy with the makeup. And then I bought a... Um, a uh, witch's broom, like a black witch's broom, like it's really small, but it's like a prop. I figure, you know, I could I could do something with that, and I could still do the black heels with the orange laces, and still do like black makeup, and then like maybe orange or green eyeshadow. And you know, as as I created those, I came up with a few more ideas for my uh, sweater dress videos. Then I have the military stuff that I uh, just recently bought, among a few other things, and the ideas have just been multiplying and because I have my personal ideas in addition to now doing custom videos for people I'm like super behind and I have this pink binder right here that just gets more and more distorted with all the ideas that I keep writing and and it seems like for every one that I chop down I for each week I get anywhere between one and three new ideas that I put pen to paper and I, I flush out like the whole scene and I'm like fuck man I, and that's, you know, I, I'm not going to bullshit. Like, obviously, if, you know, I, I did play the uh, lotto and win, I would just, having that much money, there's no need to work, at, at, uh, you know, at all. So I wouldn't have to worry about what I'm doing, you know, uh, Monday through Friday or seven days a week, and I could just make content all day long. Um, But that's just not the reality of things, and I, I got to do what I got to do. <laughs> it sucks so bad. I want to make content. I haven't even had time to play with my buddy Jason, and I haven't I haven't seen him in a while. We, you know, we're we've been so worked up and just been wanting to see each other and and just get um, you know dirty and nasty. But his schedule is just as crazy as mine. He's a trucker, and sometimes he's working five days a week. Sometimes he's working seven. And then sometimes he's working a weird split shift. Sometimes he's working nights. And then a couple days later, he's working days. And, you know, my my rule still kind of applies even with him that, like, my job comes first. And then, you know, when I have my free time, you know, I'm working on my OnlyFans content. And then the podcast, I'm going to the gym and, you know, all that other stuff. And after all that, if I have extra time, we can we can play. And you know, I, I don't like sacrificing all that stuff. But uh, the last time we talked, man, I was getting so fucking horned up because he was just like, I just want to come over there and just face fuck you and just have you swallow my load. And, you know, because the more and more that I've played with my friend Jason, the less and less I've uh, become accustomed to wearing because I've been fill I I do my makeup, lashes, lipstick, wig either some form of a dress or a jock strap and then my heels and then I don't feel nearly as exposed because he makes me feel so comfortable, relaxed and sexy so that when we're fooling around 
I'm I'm not trying to like have an abuse of words, but I feel like a sexy woman. I really do. And I, I I know that there's some other people that that's just not acceptable for them or whatever, but I feel super sexy and feminine and when it's time to be rough, he's like really he's like uh he knows how to be rough and aggressive without without making me fucking choke or in pain or be uncomfortable. And then like afterwards he knows how to be really soft and kind and, and kissing and cuddling and the the whole spectrum is really nice and you know we started exchanging like uh yeah, I'll send them pictures of like the newest content I made or a few clips of me you know doing whatever and then he'll send me pictures of like him jerking off or coming or um even video and he's just like yeah I just want to come over and just fucking bang you out and like fuck I just don't have the time it sucks so much uh but just like like I mentioned before, with everything else, as soon as this fucking seven-day bullshit is over with, I am going to start living life like Marie here. But since we're talking about Marie, and this is the last thing on the uh, on the old docket here, we got some questions. Um, talked to Marie, and she was saying that she's going to be visiting the Detroit area. She gave me a time. It's in the text or whatever. I already forgot what, what the range is, but uh, it's in there. And I told her that, uh, you know, if we could do around a certain time, uh, around a uh, specific day, unless something, you know, there's some sort of catastrophe, we could, we could totally hang out and just get to meet each other or whatever. So I thought that'd be, I thought that'd be pretty cool. But, um, all right, so let's get to these questions and that's going to close out the podcast. Have you ever been out lately where you might have been caught? Um, so... I, I have been doing some naughty stuff that I just, I kind of chose not to share just for, for one, because it's been some of the same stuff that I already did before. So like I had mentioned before about, uh, there being a bench on a bike path near an overpass and jerking off on that on a, several different occasions. And then even going there with my buddy Jason to jerk off and you know, I'm fully dressed. I have my corset on and the high heels and, and all that stuff, and makeup and wig. And it's so exhilarating because you're so far from your car that if anybody were to catch you, you there's no excuse for doing any of that, for being dressed that way, for being at that place at 2, 3, or 4 in the morning. Um, and that's, that's the last thing that I kind of... No, that's not the last thing. But that's like the most extreme thing that I did. And I say extreme due to the helplessness of being so far away from the car. Because I can't park... Because it's on a bike path that's down several hundred feet of like where our road is. So I'm about 300 feet, 400 feet away from my car. And it's down this dark path. And the only light that it, that the path receives is from the occasional headlight from the highway if it's of a certain height vehicle like a like a semi or from the moon and that's that's pretty much it but the the last kinky stuff that I talked about was uh stopping in the middle of 16 mile road by where I live like literally not even an eighth of a mile from my apartment and stopping my car turning the sexy like twerking rap music all the way up and uh I'll actually try to look for the song while I'm talking to you, just so you can kind of know what I was being naughty to. Because for for me, I have I have I have a whole bunch of songs that like when they're on, and especially like when I'm playing them, when uh, I'm getting all worked up or whatever, it just makes me feel like a sexy slut. And you know when I'm doing the naughty stuff in public that I'm doing, I just that's just a reality for me. There's nobody that can tell me otherwise. But uh, the song. That I was uh, doing this recent stuff to. Uh, it's uh, the title of the song is "Girls in the Hood" by Megan The Stallion. If you uh, want to see that, or want to listen to that, so "Girls in the Hood" by Megan The Stallion. Uh, I I talked about before stopping my car, and you know jerking off, like in front of the vehicle, as I'm parked on the street, not on the shoulder, but in the middle of the street. And just kind of like looking back and forth both ways for headlights to, to come. Because at a certain direction, depending on where you live, there might not be cars for quite a while. But 16 Mile Road, just because of the stuff that's like, because it's a small town and the stuff that's kind of near, 
cars come here and there, and there's generally not 15 minutes that go by until like a car comes. So you have roughly 10 minutes or so to kind of do what you're going to do like I did. And, uh, you know, I, I talked about sitting on the hood of the car, facing the vehicle, kind of twerking my ass, like as if there's an audience, but there's not. But because I feel sexy doing it, I just, I feel fucking hot. And because it's something that, you know, maybe legally I shouldn't be doing, but because there's nobody out there, I don't feel like I'm breaking the law or it's, uh, disturbing the peace in any way and I, I know that there's going to be some people that just disagree with that but if nobody's around nobody's seen anything nobody knows anything other than the fact that i'm telling you then there's no harm to be done and even though it's considered a parkway a metropolitan parkway um which is also 16 mile road which is also big beaver road if you keep heading west and then it also becomes quartz and as soon as it hits a residential area. Um, it's not a highway. There's not there's not cars coming and going at 80 miles an hour. It's a fi- yeah, it's like a 55 mile an hour road. Two lanes on each side of the, uh, the grass divider that has some trees in it. But uh, I'm not putting myself or anybody else at risk because I'm constantly looking, looking out so I don't get caught. I'm looking for headlights and I found... The perfect stretch on both sides of the road that are almost like they're kind of diagonal next to each other because there's curves at far ends of 16 mile road that I can I can see the shininess of headlights from the trees of the angles that they would be pointing at because the roads are curved. So unless 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 it's a cop that have their headlights off, which they sometimes do, especially in the wee hours of the morning, I am also looking for that. However, um. I'm not, nothing, nothing bad is happening to me or anybody else, but that sheer excitement of just like twerking or jerking off in my hood, whether I'm facing my windshield or facing the same direction as the headlights or even walking all the way to the back of the vehicle and then facing towards the inside of the car on the top of the hood or even like uh, in reverse cowgirl sitting on the edge of my trunk jerking off. It's all very exciting. And I, I mentioned that I did that before. What I didn't like mention is uh, some of the stuff that I've been up to lately. Not to necessarily hide anything. Um, it, it was just the fact of like, I don't want you to, I don't want anybody to think that th- that's all that I'm doing uh, to feel feminine or sexy or to like, this is what it means to be trans. I didn't want to saturate my podcast with too much of that. And especially when it's so blatant of uh, whatever. But, I'll give you some details with the last one. I'm still on question one. Shit. <laughs> so if you want to listen to this song or even have it play lightly, well, I maybe kind of share this like little, this little story that I was doing, but uh, I, there, there were some times here and there in the past few months that, uh, and this, this did happen during the summer as well, where I am just totally worked up. And it's like either the weekend where I decided that I wasn't going to make a video that day um, or that weekend or whatever. Or I think it happened one or two times during the week and then one or two times during the weekend. I did this a few times. But it was always to this song. And I leave my apartment with my wig, with my lashes, no makeup, uh, no... um, I th- a couple times I had my black mesh corset. Not it's not coupless, but it's so it's so short on the torso that my nipples almost do kind of poke out of the top, and it's very light and thin. It's like paper thin, not paper thin, but uh, it it doesn't weigh that much. And uh, I the reason I like to have that is with the way that it uh, it narrows down at my waist, it makes my ass look plump. And the thing that I recently bought uh, not too long ago was these. Uh, thigh straps and if you ever look at like especially like like black strippers they do this thing with uh, these straps they they put around both of their thighs and they pull it up all the way to the crease of their ass cheek so their ass it looks like it's just overflowing onto their thighs and i fucking love that look it's so hot so sexy and it really adds to the feminine slash like bimbo look that you could go for but because i've had two bbls at this point my ass jiggles a lot now when i walk and when i do that even more so 
So I I have had my uh, corset on, that particular corset, just because it's it's thin, and because it's mesh, it's easy to breathe through. And then I also did it with a black mesh dress that you've seen in some of my videos as well. And the these black thigh straps, they're, they're really thin. They're black, and I pull them all the way up. And then I have my black 10-inch heels. So I leave my apartment like that because it's fairly dark. Get in, the, get in the work vehicle, take the tracker out. I scope around on the highway, and I, I kind of wait for the cars to clear up. And I have the song playing on the whole time. And I'm, I'm getting more, like, horned up. I'm kind of, like, half hard listening to the song. Because it's really like a ghetto stripper, like, like porn kind of vibe. Like, it's just, like, something you would hear if you were watching, like, a compilation video of just people getting fucked in the ass. You know what I mean? So, uh, and, I, and it's back and forth between these two sections of 16 Mile Road. And depending on like where I last seen headlights is going to really determine on which portion of the or which side of the street that I'm going to be on. But uh, there was this one time to where it's not, it's not the the side of 16 Mile Road that's across from me. I happen to be over there, and then when it cleared, I hit the turnaround. That's kind of like a like a like a quarter mile down from where I was going to perform the act, but I turned back around. So now I'm on the 16 mile road back on my side of town towards my apartments. And I turned the song up pretty loud because there's no, there's no houses around in the, the immediate vicinity. Yeah. If you were outside and you were listening, you might hear some music in the background, but there are so many trees on the side of uh, 16 mile road that a lot of the, um, sounds from the road get muffled by the, uh, by not just the trees, but all the houses and the apartments in the background that not too much of that leaks off into the neighborhoods. But I, I, don't, I don't turn it all the way up, but I turn it up pretty loud. The reason being is because I'm I'm living out my own like little sexy fantasy thing in public. And because I want to create this like the sexy porn, like naughty kind of vibe, it's just me out there. The, and other than like the light from my headlights, I might have a, a little bit of moonlight. And it's 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 pretty dark out there, but I uh, I always like to stop in the right lane. Uh, mainly uh, main reason being, if for whatever reason, any like there's a cop that comes out of nowhere, or I get pulled over, or whatever, like hey, what were you doing? And they just don't ask me past like hey, what are you doing out so late? If I'm on the right side of the road, I could say I hit an ant, I, I hit a deer because there are deer in this area, and I I was checking on my car or whatever. That's more helpful to stop, I think, on the shoulder, on the right shoulder, versus like the inside or the left, especially where the turnarounds are. And um, that's why I always park in the right lane. So I have the whole left side of the vehicle, a whole other lane to walk in. And obviously, because I'm parked in the right lane, um, anything that I want to do as far as clearance goes or just having the door wide open, it's just easier to walk in. It just, to me, it makes more sense. Where it's like if I'm. If I'm parked on the shoulder, automatically there's there's more dirt and pebbles towards the side of the road versus on the the middle of the road, and then now my car is on more of a slant, and um, depending on when a car is turning from like these these corners far off in the distance, it's going to look more suspicious if you're coming out of the shoulder or off the shoulder onto the road versus they might not have seen like your brake lights be on. Or if you put it on the e-brake like I do, there will be no brake lights other than your actual just um, your your night lights be on because, you know, it's like 2, 3, 4 in the morning sometimes. But I have the song cranked all the way up, the seat all the way back so I can get out re real easy. The seat is lowered all the way. The steering wheel is put up as far as it can go. This The song is fucking just banging. I open up the car door and I, and I start my you know, like sexy... Uh, my sexy strut, my sexy walk. And because I have these these bands on, these thigh straps on, doing just just if I were to like if even if I weren't out in public and I were at home and I were just to like manipulate my body to turn left or right, my ass jiggles all over the place. So as soon as I get out and both feet are out and up and standing, my ass is jiggling. I, I feel like a sexy stripper. And I, I purposely leave my door open. So I can play off of it, but I don't do that at first. 
So I start sexy strutting towards the front of the car and, um, you know, I start doing like stripper moves and, you know, uh, dropping and twerking and then, you know, kind of uh, turning on my uh, toes of my heels, like much farther than the vehicle than I used to because I like being ballsy. And the fact that I might get caught or I'm so, I'm so vulnerable and helpless the further you are from the vehicle that, uh, you know, it, it, it adds to that, that sexual tension that I have, but you know, I, you know, I start twerking on the hood and then I start like leaning back and then going spread Eagle and then clacking my heels together, pulling them back. And then, uh, then what I started doing even more is crawling to the very top of the roof of the vehicle, twerking, facing in different directions. Like nobody's coming, getting, working my way from the front of the vehicle on the hood, all the way to the trunk of the vehicle and then getting off and then walking and then getting on the trunk again, then then climbing all the way from the top of the vehicle, twerking on the windshield with my ass facing towards where the driver would be and my head towards the front of the vehicle. And then, you know, getting down and then walking to the side of the door. And then I'm twerking and then I'm kind of using the, the edge of the door as like a pole. And then I that's that's where I, I, I start to like twerk and jerk off and come. And then I get back in and my legs are shaking. I'm terrified. My heart is racing. And I did that like three or four different times this last year so far. And I was just like, fuck, man. And the reason I didn't want to share, like I said, I don't want you to think that I'm some uh, pure adrenaline junkie to where I'm like ruining my life or this is this is all that cross-dressing or, or trans stuff means to me. Whatever whatever words you want to use to, to help better digest what I'm saying. But um, yeah, so... That's that's one of the things that I did lately where I might be caught, but because I'm so close to my car, I, you know, I I mean, yeah, it, technically I I qualify for your question, but um, not that close yet. I uh, I have dared to get closer. All right, let's move on to the next one. Where do you buy your clothes or shoes and shoes from? So mostly I buy everything off of Amazon, which includes hats, glasses. The actual clothes themselves, corsets, pasties, jock straps, stockings. And then you can take a risk on going to places like Wish or e uh, Wish or um, AliExpress.com. Uh, it's a very high gamble. eBay is not bad and Etsy is not bad. But the problem with uh, eBay and Etsy, obviously eBay lets you buy things outright. Very rarely have I ever cost, come across something that has bids on it. Um, and as for Etsy, everything is handcrafted. So everything, because it's um, they made it. You know, obviously, as a creator, I definitely understand that you feel like you, you deserve whatever money you're asking for. But most things that you want cost anywhere from like 80 to $300 and where you could buy it in the store. But the reason you find yourself Etsy is because it's in a certain style and it has a certain color and a certain size. And some of these things uh, you can get made from custom and that's why they cost so much. So consider that. Now, uh, for my shoes, pleasershoes.com is where I go for the shoes. And as soon as you go to the website, there's like five, no, I think there's six or different, six or seven different subsections underneath the actual website that have a whole different brand of shoe they have all these other particular styles so like pleaser shoes almost across the board is all shoes made for strippers or strip tees or burlesque people then they have um more gothic shoes and other sections and then then like these like uh pink and pastel type of uh shoes it, they, you really have to take your time going through there but i mostly buy stuff for uh for the the stripper style of a shoe just because i like the bigger heel so that's where i recommend going for there i did a whole pod i did like two podcasts that are that are much earlier got to scroll through where i talk about where to buy stuff uh, from different websites I actually give you the exact website and so on and so forth so take your time going through that because it's uh, it's kind of wordy um, how many people in your circle know about your OnlyFans videos? Everybody that knows about that side of me knows about my OnlyFans just because talking about the, the trying to look like a lady, um, once they know that, telling them about OnlyFans is much easier. So 
Everybody that knows about that knows about that other uh, my OnlyFans. What's the kinkiest thing you've ever done? So in a relationship with a woman, the kinkiest thing I ever did is use a double-sided dildo on each other to where it was in my ass, and we were facing each other, and I was fucking her pussy while it was in my ass, and that was kind of hot. I got off barely. She didn't. It was my ass just wasn't used to that. Um, so it... I didn't do the best job in terms of being a sexual partner that day, that's for sure. But uh, it was much more of a task than I was used to as far as a... Yeah, and yeah, as far as like a, a straight relationship, I can't think of anything else that I did kinkier. Um, it was the same girl. She eventually pegged me, and I thought that was kind of hot. Uh, I came, I came then as well. Again, it was much more of a task because you really have to concentrate. But she was... Uh, she was 5'9". She had a bob-style haircut that was like a little bit shorter than shoulder length. She was very tall and lean. She had like like A-cup titties. She had like very perky, puffy nipples. And she had like kind of like a little booty on her. So when she uh, when she was in the mis missionary position, to look at her like titties jiggle and shake while she was like fucking me was like so hot. And because she had like really big eyes and like uh like a very sexy smile to just like watch her like rail on me was super fucking hot um i don't think anything that i did with a guy at this point in time was necessarily kinky so i me i mentioned all that stuff i did with my buddy jason so far and the first time we hooked up i was like wearing my bondage mask mask and stuff but as far as i'm concerned uh like having like gay sex that was all more vanilla stuff but that's just um that's just me what's on your bucket list Short term, I want to meet a cross-dresser slash trans person that's on my level to play with. Um, I've been with women my entire life. Uh, and I've only been with one guy that's my friend Jason. Uh, but I have yet to be with a cross-dresser or a trans girl that have... Oh, I talked about it in the past. I've, I've gotten blowjobs from two, uh, at the time, cross-dressers, and I think they both became... Uh, trans women as time went on, but I didn't keep up with them because this is this is fucking like ten years ago. This is a long time ago. Uh, that so that was my experience as a guy being with them, and yeah, I couldn't help but think that I wanted to be them more than I actually wanted to. Well, I did want to fuck them, but I was like, dude, it, it's they're hot because they were like chicks with dicks. But um, you know, I, I get a lot of contact from like cross dressers or people in the early stages of transition that um, they don't. They don't take full consideration of their of their look, not nearly as much as I do. And because I I like the feminine figure when it's fully shaved and everything, I get a lot of cross dressers that either have like a full beard or facial stubble or hairy chest, arms, stomach, back, legs, and you know their cock and balls and their ass. Uh, it just doesn't make me get hard. It doesn't. I don't find that to be sexy. And then even when maybe they are smooth, they don't take the time to either apply makeup or wear a wig or wear, like, crazy heels. Uh, it seems like a lot of the people that want to have fun, it's just for the thrills of it without putting any work into it. So it's like they have, like, a, a pair of, like, regular-looking women's underwear, maybe a thong, and maybe it's from their wife, maybe not. And uh, I want to find somebody that either takes it to a little bit more to the extreme or um, kind of dresses like in the way that I do, and like I've mentioned this before, but I'm I, I like women, I like trans women, uh, cross dressers, femboys, twinks, but I really like to have that feminine edge if I'm going to be if it's going to be mutual or I'm going to be topping. I love I love getting pounded out by my friend Jason, which is has more of like a a, a bear hairy daddy type of uh, vibe, but he's topping me. So I'm not, I don't really get aroused when he starts sucking me off or licking my ass because like the facial hair and the the, the feeling of it doesn't do anything for me in that direction. So uh, short term goal for sure is to meet a cross dresser that tries at least as hard as I do. Uh, another another thing is to have a three way with two cross dressers or trans girls, just an upgrade from the first one, or a threesome with two other dudes just getting. Um, just getting fucking pounded out, I thought would be really hot uh, from both ends, sucking a dick and getting fucked. Just having them run a train on me and just 
calling the date long term. And I've been thinking about this more and more, especially with a person like Christian XXX or Christian Triple X. So if you just type in Christian and then XXX, he almost, it seems like he almost does exclusively porn with like uh, trans women, cross dressers, and, and, you know, all that stuff. But uh, seeing how easily he seems to be to get a hold of, um, I I would love to be in an actual porn. Not necessarily with him, although I, I, I will, I've only heard and seen good things with him. All his content is like top rate. And he does things from like more complex, like longer scenes to like shorter stuff to where it's just, it's just a cross-dresser or a femboy or a trans woman. Just they're banging it out and that's the clip. But... Uh, I've been giving that more and more serious thought of like to act to be in an actual porn that's going to be on a website and maybe sold in a DVD to me. That's like super hot. Um, long, another long term thing is all the surgeries on my list. So hair replacement, electrolysis, facial feminine, fe, facial feminization, feminization surgery, implants, breast implants and hormones. Uh, with the electrolysis, I talked about that a few times. It's uh, it's just as expensive as laser hair removal, but it's more painful even though it's permanent. And the only risk that you run is if somebody doesn't know what they're doing or if they're not paying attention to the direction of your hair follicle and how it's growing out of your face, you can like, actually have like little scars and stuff all over the place. But I've resorted to, on my face, plucking out all the hairs that didn't really get slowed down or kept recurring ever since my laser hair treatments on my face. So I've been doing that, um, not on a daily basis, but if you if you do like fifty or sixty hairs at a time, after like the next week, you hardly have anything coming out of your face. So it's really like two or three times a week that I that I just spend time listening to a podcast or a YouTube, like uh, in the background, at, you know, in my bedroom or something like that. But uh, the electrolysis, I think, is going to be the next thing that I'm going to be putting money on after i have everything paid off uh next up what's the furthest you've traveled for sex so i've never i've never traveled strictly just for sex there has been times where it's been a motivator but um if we're talking relationships like like both ways like roughly 200 miles give or take um like I said before, because I don't like to take to take the risk of like catching anything, I like to get to know somebody. And if the vibe just isn't there, if something is off, I don't take that risk. I've I've displayed a lot of risky behavior with women and dating apps and just not giving a fuck. And I just didn't catch anything, and then realizing just how risky I have been. I don't want to to have that play out anymore. And then obviously, you know, if you're if you're playing to fuck dudes, their behavior is even more risky and outrageous. Not I'm not disgusted by it. I I totally get if you want to go to a, a sex club or sex dungeon, or an adult bookstore and, and suck cocks and or a, a rest area or a truck stop or whatever. I get it. It's not confusing to me. But the reason I'm saying that. Is because if you're in the if you're in the state of mind to travel any distance for sex, in my mind, you're you're probably going to be ignoring signs of that either something isn't right for your personal safety, like you might get robbed, or even if the fact that they they might have a disease like like oh that's not a cold sore or that's not herpes on their lip that's just uh that's just like a cold cold sore everybody gets or that's just a pimple or What's this rash on their genitals? Like you might just be choosing choosing to ignore that stuff, using the guise that it's like something else. And I've always been fairly level headed in terms of like texting with somebody for for days and days as opposed to like hours and like let, hey let's meet up and for the first time like let's fuck. I've never I've never really uh, never really done that, especially for the feminine side of myself zero, because I'm just not taking the chance with the type of people that uh, choose to message me all the time. And I, right now, I'm mostly talking about... I'm not on Grindr now, but like when I was, I'm talking about that type of attitude, that type of aggression, those types of guys on Grindr, other dating apps, or FetLife, because it can get pretty aggressive. And when you know when a guy is horned up, 
It's text, 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 notification after notification, picture after picture I didn't ask for. And then you can tell once they bust, busted their nut because you don't hear anything from them either for hours, days, weeks, or even months. And then uh, sometimes even like a year or so in my case, I'll, somebody will pop up, hey, what's going on? And I'm like, Who, what? I haven't heard from you in fucking 16 months. And you're just going to text me like we're like old pals? And it's like, no. But uh, yeah, not... Not far at all for sex. Uh, last question. Um, ever met someone and gone home with them or gone to your place? I have met people off of dating apps, and there was only like one case to where it was clearly a booty call. No, two, where it was clearly a booty call for both of us, and nobody gave a fuck. Uh, we both met at my place. One was like a tiny a tiny spinner. She had like a pixie haircut. I think she said she weighed like 95 pounds. She had tits and ass too. She had tits and ass at 95 pounds. She was like 4'11". And I was like, oh my God. Like this bitch was banging. There was another chick that he was, she was even sexier. She was like a suicide girl. She was 5'11". Amazing tits. Not quite like Gianna Michaels. But in that realm of like size and shape. In shape, tiny waist, wide wide hips, thick ass, thick thighs. And we fucked that night and day. And she just left huge cum stains on my bed. That, and the, the, it just, they needed to get washed. It was fucking, it was pretty crazy. But uh, yeah, so those are my only two instances of that. And ever since then, I've, uh, I just try to be safe with uh, people that I, uh, I'm in contact with. But anyways... That's the episode, sissies. I'm glad everybody had fun. I hope you did. Pe- more and more people have been reaching out um, with uh, with stories, comments, concerns, questions on all the different things. And like I said, I, I try to have everything leak out at a certain pace just because it's not. I'm not getting overwhelmed with it. And sometimes I like to expose a little bit more, and then sometimes I like to leak it out a little bit slower. But as always, if you want to reach out to my email, original sin. 1369 at gmail.com and it's all one word original s-y-n 1369 at gmail.com and if you want to you know find me on twitter or instagram or pornhub just go to my podcast and all the links are at the bottom and uh yeah just uh if you want to share your story or anything be sure to leave whatever whatever name you're comfortable with and age if you can and your location vaguely, just so I can kind of have an idea of where you're from. And for everybody else, you know, just to, just so that they can have a vague idea that they're not the only one. And then just, you know, where in the world that you're at. I think that's nice. All right. I've been mumbling enough. I'll talk to you later, sissies. Bye.